Well, as we mentioned earlier, Senator Al Franken was back on Capitol Hill this week. He is continuing to acknowledge the recent accusations of sexual misconduct against him. The Senate Ethics Committee has opened an investigation into groping claims by five different women. So far, the vast majority of prominent Minnesota Democratic women, including Senator Amy Klobuchar, have condemned the alleged harassment, but have not called on Senator Franken to resign. There are two notable exceptions. State Auditor Rebecca Otto and Representative Aaron Murphy, both DFL candidates for governor, they say Franken should step down. And joining us right now, Representative Aaron Murphy of St. Paul to talk about this and other issues. Thank you so much. Good morning. All right, let me ask you, why should Senator Franken resign? You're really in the minority here when it comes to prominent DFL women. What I want is for this behavior to stop in our workplaces across this country. And as we have been watching the news, we know that it's a prevalent issue. It's a prevalent incident in corporate offices, in capital offices, in college campuses, in the Catholic Church. And as long as we continue to condone the behavior by saying we should laugh it off or look the other way, um, and I've heard women who serve in public office who have served longer than I who say they were taught to laugh it off as long as we continue to condone it. Uh, we're saying to the next generation of people coming into the workplace that we're okay with it. I'm not and I don't think Minnesotans are either. And for that reason I think it's important that we turn the page and start talking about the ways that we prevent sexual assault and sexual right. harassment. But because of that, to turn the page, you feel that Senator Franken needs to resign immediately. I think it's really important that uh, we don't condone the behavior that we say that it's got to come to an end and that's important for me. This is an issue about power and the abuse of power and it's happening in workplaces across this country and for young women and young men and for trans people it's time for us to say enough. It has to stop. All right. Let's go further into that issue. We had Representative uh, Erin May Quaid here uh, just a few weeks ago. She actually went to you uh, talking about how legislators had been harassing her. She was, you were the one she confided in. Since then, uh, one of those legislators, Senator Schoen, has resigned. Also, uh, Representative Tony Cornish have, has resigned. What do we do going forward? Because the climate at the Minnesota legislature uh, appears shockingly uh, inappropriate uh, for a, a workplace. I'm really proud of Representative May Quaid and of Lindsay Port. Uh, who I think brought uh, to attention this issue inside the state capitol and we have work to do inside the state capitol and we have work to do across workplaces uh, in the state of Minnesota and across this country. I think it's important that we continue to invest in training. Um, we need to sharpen that in the Minnesota House of Representatives in the state capitol, although we do go through training. Um, we have to remember that uh, elected officials are not the same as hired officials, and we have to make sure that the power differential there is represented in our policies, in our training. We need to do that, and I know that Aaron McQuaid and Lindsay Port and others are pursuing that in terms of public policy and House of Representatives policy. But I want to say to you that I have been working on this issue as a legislator since the early part of my career. And on college campuses across the state of Minnesota, young campus leaders are talking about the idea of consent. And that, I think, is a really important grounding and centering for this issue going forward. Right. Uh, you are a nurse by profession, uh, also obviously a legislator since, I believe, 2006. This is a crowded field. What sets you apart? Why are you more qualified than the other DFL candidates to become the next governor of Minnesota? So I always like to start with my executive experience because it's important that people understand that I have that qualification to run. I have served in the Minnesota House now for 11 years. I've corralled a, a caucus of 73 Democrats. Um, I've run a surgical suite as a surgical nurse on the transplant team. I've run a big organization of nurses across the state. Um, I've got a lot of policy accomplishments and a lot of political experience. And Minnesotans have been my teachers for the last 11 years of, as, as I've spent my time traveling the state. But the thing I think that makes me different is my work as a registered nurse. When you take care of somebody, no matter how hard the situation is, you can't walk away. And too often in our politics now, we walk away from the issues that are most difficult. I can't walk away from Minnesotans. And the Minnesotans who have sent me into the House of Representatives to re represent them, I take their, their vote of confidence in me as I do any patient that I've ever taken care of. All right. Now let me ask you briefly. Um, you are a supporter of a single-payer system. Is that really realistic in this uh, age where we have a, a President Donald Trump? I mean, that's, how can that possibly work? Minnesota led the way 25 years ago when we passed Minnesota Care, and I was a baby organizer for the Minnesota Nurses Association, bringing nurses' voices to the Capitol in support of that. And we can lead the way, again, using Minnesota Care here in the state as a foundation to allow anyone 
not just those in the individual market, but anyone to buy in and to begin to build the infrastructure for direct contracting. Well, Representative Aaron Murphy, thank you so much for coming in. We want to let you know that Representative Murphy has agreed to continue this conversation right after the show ends at 11 a.m. on WCCO's Facebook page. The easiest way for you to join that conversation at 11 a.m. is to like WCCO TV on Facebook. Then you can join us live at 11 a.m. or even watch the video later. Again, thank you, Representative. Thank you very much. Well,